Will somebody please help this man? Now, I know he was raised from the dead in the TV show, but in the books, a Song of Ice and Fire series, poor Jon Snow has been bleeding out at Castle Black for 3,894 days. And it looks like his suffering will continue. Nerderotic.com. Yes, that's right. 3,894 days since the release of A Dance with Dragons, the last book we received in the A Song of Ice and Fire series. And it looks like it's the last book. Now, it has been a while since we got a true update on The Winds of Winter, aside from a couple of passing mentions well over a year where George R. Martin did give us some details to where exactly he was in the book. Now, maybe he writes out of order, but as I said in a video made again over a year ago, I believed he was only halfway through, and I still believe that. I'm not one of these writers who uh, outlines every what's going to be in every scene, what's going to be in every chapter. I might be faster if I did. That is the worst joke I ever heard. And we will recap that evidence in just a bit. But first, let's get to his blog post. Random updates and bits of news. March 9th, 2022 at 8.42 a.m. I look around and I don't know where 2021 went. I blinked and it was gone. Not a year that I am going to mourn much any more than 2020. A global pandemic. So many deaths, including friends of mine, as well as celebrities of all sorts, Politics have grown increasingly toxic. It was a year best forgotten. I did, however, get a lot of work done in 2021, an enormous amount of work. In truth, I seem to have an enormous number of projects. I am not complaining. I like working, writing, editing, producing. There is nothing I like better than storytelling. I know, I know for many of you out there, there is only one of those projects that matters. I'm sorry for you. They all matter to me. Well, that sounds a bit salty because it is, and the salt does not end there. But I'll state, hey, I have no problem with other projects being important to George, but I think he does owe the fans. I think he does have a priority to finish the Winds of Winter and a financial one on top of that. Something else we will get to later. Yes, of course, I am still working on the Winds of Winter. I have stated that a hundred times in a hundred venues, having to restate it endlessly is just wearisome george i don't know if this is the time to start whining about how hard it is to write your really popular story that fans really love and want to see it's a time like this where people probably want to hear a little more gratitude here's some unsolicited advice by all means have these feelings and by all means keep them to yourself i made a lot of progress on winds of winter in 2020 and less in 2021 but less is not none it gets worse the world of westeros the world of a song of ice and fire is my number one priority. That is good to hear. And will remain so until the story is told. Brilliant. But Westeros has become bigger than the winds of winter. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to bring out the Silmarillion argument without talking about the Silmarillion. If you want to know what that is, George did an interview a couple of years back stating that he is completely fine leaving a dream for spring unfinished and compared it to Tolkien saying that Tolkien's life work was the Silmarillion which I would absolutely agree with but Tolkien did finish the Lord of the Rings no one would give a crap about the Silmarillion if the Lord of the Rings had remained unfinished with the two towers let's hear that again but Westeros has become bigger than the Winds of Winter or even a Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, no, 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 no. In addition to wins, I also need to deliver the second volume of Archmaester Gildane's history, Fire and Blood. You know, the book that delayed the Winds of Winter some more so they could set up an HBO show, thinking of calling that one Blood and Fire, rather than Fire and Blood Volume 2. 
I'm down with that title as long as it doesn't get written and doesn't come out until after Winds of Winter, except got a couple hundred pages of that one written, but there's still a long way to go. Now, George has stated that he wasn't going to write the second volume until after he was done with Winds, but apparently that has changed and it's not the only thing. I need to write more of the Duncan Egg novellas. Why are we bringing this up all of a sudden? Tell the rest of their stories, especially since there's a tell television series about them in development i don't know if he doesn't care or if he doesn't get it i'm guessing it's a little bit of both there's a lavish coffee table book coming later this year an illustrated condensed version of fire and blood done with elio garcia and lyndon antonson my partners on the world of ice and fire a book i like quite a bit and a book that was obviously made to satisfy the publishers, and that's what this is too. Nobody cares about this, and I'm not going to buy it. I'm not buying anything from George until he delivers Winds of Winter. And another book after that, oh God, a who's who in Westeros, and that's just the books. Again, that's another one just to satisfy the publishers who probably fronted him a hell of a lot of money, and I'm guessing... They're the ones putting pressure on him. But if you're in a Song of Ice and Fire fan, the news gets worse, I'm sorry to say. There are also successor shows. Those have taken a ton of my time and attention this year. Yeah, we guessed. I have seen some comments out there questioning how much I am involved in the new series. The answer is a lot. Yes, again, we guessed, and we don't want you involved a lot in these shows. Most of us could care less about these shows. Deeply, heavily involved in every one of these new shows. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Game of Thrones season eight and seven were pretty f***ed up, but part of that is George's fault. And of course, I'm uh, starting to worry because everybody's asking me, what are you going to do if David and Dan and the show catches up to you? I feel sometimes as if I'm, uh, I'm laying track for a railroad and I can hear the locomotive coming up here. <laughs> and I better keep laying that track pretty fast here because uh, I'll get squashed if the locomotive comes. <laughs> It's my world, and while I have been working closely with some fantastic writers and showrunners, ultimately it is up to me to try to keep the canon, well, canonical, and to do all I can to help make the new shows great. And I love these stories too. And you know what? I really like a lot of these side stories. I think they add a lot of depth to the main story, A Song of Ice and Fire. That's what they were originally created to do, but now they have taken over. And dude, it's clear he does not want to finish The Winds of Winter. He has lost interest. It is purely obligatory now. Retelling the story over again is not as much fun as telling the story for the first time. Um... So far, I'm very excited. House of the Dragon has wrapped in London and is now in post-production. What I have seen, I have loved. I am eager to see more. I'm excited about the other successor shows as well. However, I am dying to tell you all about them, but I am not supposed to so. And then he wants to tell you about them. And quite frankly, I could give two shits about a Game of Thrones show. I will cover it out of a mild curiosity, but I'm not excited. Briefly, we'll run down these series from Rome's Bruno Heller, we might get a Corliss Valerian series, The Sea Snake, and even at the peak of my A Song of Ice and Fire interest, I would only be mildly interested myself in this. We might get a 10,000 Ships, a Nymeria series. Arya named her Direwolf after her. She is the woman who founded Dorne, and I could give a crap about Dorne. Then we could possibly get an animated Yee-T series, The Golden Empire, which has all of a paragraph written about it in a world of ice and fire. And finally, the only show I would be really interested in, The Hedge Knight, Duncan Egg, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. And I would only be interested in this if he finished The Winds of Winter. So there is lots going on, and we can see that, but there isn't a lot going on with The Winds of Winter. And me, I will continue to work with writers and showrunners and directors and producers on all these shows, plus... Roadmarks for HBO and Dark Winds for AMC and Wild Cards. And I will just say it because nobody else will. Wild Cards. Nothing against Melissa Snodgrass and all of his friends that he tries to get jobs for, but nobody cares about it. And in addition to all of that, let me say once again, yes, I am still working on Winds of Winter 
just not that much. And let's be real, it's not coming. Winter has been canceled. <laughs> now, it was about a year ago I made a video stating that I believe he was only halfway through the book, and I still believe that's roughly where he is. Wait a minute. Who are you? Before we get into that, I will acknowledge that my shirt has changed, the camera has changed, and my studio has changed because I'm in the middle of building it. So let's move on. Now, we are creeping up on 11 years since the release of A Dance with Dragons that had 72 chapters. George has talked about The Winds of Winter being 1,500 to 1,700 manuscript pages. For the sake of argument, let's just say it will be equal in length to A Dance with Dragons. There have been a lot of sample chapters and partial sample chapters released or read at conventions, including Sir Barristan Selmy, Part 1 and 2. There's a Theon chapter, a Mercy chapter, who's actually Arya in Bravos, and an Elaine chapter, who's actually Sansa in the Vale. We have Arion 1 and 2 in the Stormlands, going off to meet John Connington and Fake Aegon, or Fagon. There's a full and a partial Tyrion chapter out there. There's a partial Victarion chapter and the brilliant Forsaken chapter with the damp hair, Aaron Greyjoy and Euron Greyjoy. George, a year ago in his blog post, admitted to finishing three chapters at the time. Wow. So let's calculate it this way. It's been roughly 128 months since the release of A Dance with Dragons. George says he's going to write 1,700 manuscript pages. Well, 17,000 divided by 3,895 is roughly 2.3 pages per day. In a blog post from almost two years ago when he was locked in a cabin for a year due to COVID and still couldn't manage to finish the book, he mentioned going back to Bravos and Aria. And if you're familiar at all with the books, that's not good news. That probably means he was only halfway done. And considering he wrote, I made a lot of progress on wins in 2020 and less in 2021, but less is not done while I was working on 17 TV shows and three other books. Dude was locked in a cabin for a year after nine years and still couldn't get it done. And he couldn't get it done because he's easily distracted and he has impulse control issues. Not going to really judge him for that. Listen, the man hit it late. He hit the big time in his late 60s or mid 60s. And quite frankly, he probably wants to live his life, and I get that. So why not just write an outline and let somebody else finish it? I doubt anybody would have a problem with that. We'd rather have that than you not finishing at all. You know what we don't want? Another freaking coffee table book of the who's who of a story that's not going to finish. But I'm going to bottom line this for everyone. He has sold out the book fans for HBO, for Hollywood. That's a fact. And quite frankly, who could blame him with the performance of some of the award winners at last year's Worldcon who wanted to cancel him for mispronouncing names? And here is the Best New Writers award speech. Thank you to everyone who voted. It means a lot. I'll just say quickly, the Astounding Award is the award for the Best New Writer. But if I were talking to a new writer coming to the genre in 2020, I would tell them, if you are an author of color, you will very likely be paid only a fraction of the advance that white writers are getting. You will be pigeonholed, you will be miscategorized, you will be lumped in with other authors of color whose work doesn't remotely resemble yours. The chances are very high that you will be sexually harassed at conventions or the target of racist microaggressions or very often just overt racism. People will mispronounce your name repeatedly. Quang. 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 Congratulations. Quang. Your cover art will be racist. You'll have to push against that. And the way people talk about you and your literature will be tied to your identity and your personal trauma instead of the stories you're actually trying to tell. Shut up about it. To put it lightly, on top of George's poor work ethic and lack of responsibility towards his customers and his publisher, there's also a conspiracy of, let's just say, unfortunate events like the woke psychopaths in the sci-fi and fantasy book industry woke psychopaths that he let in the door and who would cancel him at the drop of a hat uh yeah i, I there are days i wonder if i bit off more than i can chew i guess that's what happens when you try to subvert 
the tropes of a better writer. Pile on top of that, the complete disaster that was Game of Thrones Season 8 and, of course, Season 7. A Song of Ice and Fire was originally supposed to be a trilogy, then it turned into seven books. We received the first in 1996 with A Game of Thrones, then 1998 with A Clash of Kings, and the best book was published in 2000, A Storm of Swords. Five years later, we got A Feast for Crows, and then we had to wait six more years as he re-edited and rewrote the other part of that book to become A Dance with Dragons. So to make it even worse, in the last 22 years, we've received one book that was split into two. In other words, folks, this ain't happening, and this blog post all but starts to admit it. So the book fans are left in a cold along with a lot of characters because every single chapter ended on a cliffhanger, including Arya in her sample chapter just killed somebody she wasn't supposed to, so she's on the bad side of the faceless men once again. And I suppose we'll never find out what happens with Davos, who's on his way to Skagos to deal with some cannibals to retrieve Rick and Stark, or Sansa, who's posing as Littlefinger's bastard Elaine in the Vale. I guess we'll never find out about the Dornish conspiracy, and quite frankly, I could give a crap. Guess we'll never find out about the Grand Northern conspiracy, which is one I obsessed over for years, so that's kind of a bummer, and we'll never really find out what happens with Stannis the Manus, who is still alive. We'll never find out about the Pink Letter, supposedly written by Ramsay Bolton, who is also still alive. We'll never find out about poor Daenerys Targaryen, who is lost in a Dothraki sea, half-naked, surrounded by Dothraki, and a very tired drove Gone. We won't find out what happens to Tyrion, Jorah Mormont, Barristan Selmy, R plus L equals J, the White Walkers, the others, and yes, poor Jon Snow, who's probably just dead. But that's okay, because we've got House of the Dragon coming out, and at least that's based on a story with an ending. I mean, there's not a lot of dialogue, and there's not a ton of plot, because it was written basically as a history, but it's got an ending. Just not a very good one. So as George passes the baton to Amazon to take over subverting Tolkien's text, I will say George remains Tolkien's bitch. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. I'm a widow girl who acts like a widow boy, and I'm a killer with my widow sword. Next. Nerderotic.com. Please subscribe.